Who is the Leviathan of Isaiah 27 1? In this Bible study question, they wanted to know who the Leviathan was. They wanted to know if it was the devil. Who is the sea dragon? And is this a little literal sword or is it the word of God that's talked about dealing with these things? Well, when we read Isaiah 27, 1, it says, In that day the Eternal will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, with his fierce and great and mighty sword. Even Leviathan, the twisted serpent, and he will kill the dragon who lives in the sea. So are they all the same? Well, in that day refers to the end time and the time of God's wrath upon those who live on the earth, who live beneath the earth, and those who fly in the sky above the earth. When he ever uses in that day, he's referring to the time of his wrath. Now, the part of the verse that says, the eternal will punish Leviathan. Although some biblical scholars believe Leviathan to be a mythical creature, or uh, a <coughs> devil's avatar, we do not find any biblical evidence to support either of these hypotheses. The word Leviathan is uh, lai yafam in Hebrew. And it means uh, shall we say a wreathed animal or a wreathed snake. Now you put a wreath on something that is of authority. A king wears a wreath, you know, things like that. It also refers to a GMA or GMO animal. GMA is genetically modified animal and GMO animals, the same thing. It refers to a very large sea monster. It means a disturber of deep waters. It is also used to describe the consternation dragon. One who causes mourning. A traveler of the great deep. Something that can go five and six miles down into the ocean with no problem. The word implies a physical creature of great strength <coughs> who dislikes the daylight and is capable of traveling at great depths in underground trenches, underground rivers and seas, or in the sea itself. And this is important to note because the word doesn't imply a mythical creature at any point in time, nor does it imply a spiritual creature at any point in time. None of those meanings imply either of the things. So the idea that the modern day scholars have that it is a mythical creature means that they've been smoking too much of something or other that wasn't so legal. Okay. And nowhere does it indicate that it's a demonic avatar. Okay. 
It just doesn't apply that. It applies a creature that is capable of reproducing. In Psalm 74:14, we see it says this on it. You did crush the heads of the Leviathans. You did give him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. In some translations, it puts peoples of the wilderness. How many people here can eat Spirits. <laughs> Does it make a good meal? Anybody know how to do roasted spirits? <laughs> how about roasted mythological mythological creatures? Okay. No? Diet food. It'd be severe diet food, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd have to be doing some pretty good hallucinating. The way Asaph wrote these scriptures, we see a um, many-headed serpent. And if we look into the Indian religion, the East Indian religions, mm -hmm. what do they have carved on their walls? Mm -hmm. A many-headed serpent. Wow. And, the, but the way he wrote it, these Leviathan are multiple types and multiple <laughs> designs. Um, you look at fish, you can have a family of fish and they're different all the way along in the family. You can have Let's say salmon of the West Coast is different than salmon of the East Coast. Okay. Arctic char is different than river char or silverhead char, or but it's all part of the char family. And that's what this is implying, that it's a family, a Genesis family name, not a particular one creature organized. Organism, yes. Even Hercules had fought the Hydra, which was a multi headed dragon like being that was mm -hmm. out of certain waters near Greece. Right. These travel the depths, the great depths. Well, the fleeing serpent. This means it is a reptile, not a spirit. When you call something a serpent, it's you're referring to a reptilian in nature. The uh, fleeing implies a dislike for daylight or even God's light. It can't stand the light of day. It likes to travel in the dark. With his, Jesus, fierce and great and mighty sword. This fierce sword is like a lightsaber um, that has no limits. You see, the, a plasma sword, you could limit it to only go out, let's say, 30 inches or 36 inches. But once you create a laser, a light laser, you know, for sword, there's no limit as to how far it can reach. And that's what this is, why it's called a fierce sword. There's no limit as to how far out it can reach. Or through what it can cut through. A great and mighty sword indicates something that can cut through anything. It implies a sword that is controlled only by the very word of God. 
not your emotions. Okay. Even uh, Leviathan, the twisted serpent, referring to another variety. This is referring to something that has gone through genetic manipulation or modifications. And something that has been used to destroy the work of God. And he, Jesus, will kill the dragon who lives in the sea. This again shows that it is that it cannot be Satan who is the prince of the power of the air. Didn't say he was the prince of the power of the depths of the sea. This does not appear to be referring to the a Leviathan, but to a creature who is only one of a kind. This dragon, that there's only one of these dragons left. Um, and it's kind of interesting with uh, what's that, uh, Tolkien on The Hobbit. In part two of The Hobbit, they go and they wake a dragon that's been asleep for 60 years. An ancient dragon. The last one on earth. And they need a special arrow to kill it. A magical arrow, arrow in, in effect. But he used stuff out of this to, when he wrote it, mm -hmm. trying to explain that they're what the dragon, yeah. And the dragon says there's one coming that will bring darkness to the whole of the earth. Mm -hmm. So could it be the same force? Could the dragon and the one that brings the darkness to the earth be, this, be the same thing if he's telling him that He just declared himself king under the mountain. Okay. Not king of the of the world. That means he's a, it's a servant being. Okay. And it's interesting, it was the last dragon on earth. The and it went to sleep in a pile of gold for 60 years. And indications from its size and everything else that it was tens of thousands of years old. There's lots of things that come up where people have grabbed items out of the Bible as themes for making their movies or writing their books to make it easier to explain or to bring it so that you can have some life to what's being said there. Well, this creature of the sea, this dragon, um, and said it's not appearing to be that Leviathan. This is something different. The dragon has one head, the Leviathan has many heads. But he said it came out of the sea. Okay. And he, Jesus, will kill the dragon who lives in the sea. Now, this is very important phrase. In the sea. We had a couple continents that sunk. The 
continent of Moon and the continent of Atlantis. We know that the Lemurians built defenders, biological defenders of their continent to keep out the Atlantans. It is quite probable that they genetically engineered the dragon and that there is a giant dragon still living in the sea right now this can be woken wouldn't that be neat mm -hmm. dragons blowing fire and burning up your house mm -hmm. while you're trying to sleep that should wake up a lot of people <laughs> <coughs> this dragon is possibly the last defender of the Lemurian continent of Mo that's being talked about here Psalm 24, verses, um, where's that say? 20, at least uh, Psalm 24, it might be Psalm uh, 74, but uh, verses 13, 12 and 13, indicate a one-time, uh, like, that at one time there was a great many dragons, and Leviathan existed in great numbers. And I think if you read these scriptures, you're going to enjoy what it says in that group of scriptures. 